Good morning, everyone. Isn't it beautiful outside? Okay, good morning. I'm Pastor Dave Arruda, and I am coming to you from the Trinity United Methodist Church in the wonderful city of Mount Pelier, Vermont. And uh, welcome. I am also we're also doing the worship service for Faith Fellowship United Methodist Church in Mansfield, Massachusetts. And so we are coming to you uh, to to worship together and come together in the name of Jesus Christ. And so as we uh, gather together, uh, let us be uh, in prayer and uh, and in the community of Christ. And so. Very quickly, are there any announcements from Trinity for anything? Okay, there is a um, pastor's discussion over the uh, over the message each week, uh, and it's done at 4 o'clock p.m. on Sunday, and the Zoom link uh, is on the screen. Um, if you can see it, if you are worshiping with us from a distance, you can take a screenshot of it if you'd like. And then uh, you can join us. It's the same code every week. So uh, welcome. you're welcome to join us to have um, lighthearted conversation about the, the message and how things, uh, what you heard and what you didn't hear and, and all of the things that you can correct me on um, based on what you heard in the, uh, in the message. So uh, please feel free to join in. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to meet the folks that are worshiping from a distance, uh, and so we we welcome everybody to come in. So if I believe that is the only announcement we have, we don't have any others, correct? No. Nope. Okay. I like it when we're when we're just busy spreading the good news of Jesus instead of trying to get things done, doing other things. Uh, as, okay. So we will do the call to worship. And I will lead you in the call to worship. Um, the bold letters are what you say. This is inspired by the song Waymaker, and I want to share something about this. Uh, this song is uh, very popular in contemporary Christian music. And it's uh, a lot of the big younger churches use it, and a lot of people think that it comes from, from them. But actually, it was written by an African lady. Uh, her name is... Um, her last name is Okoro, uh, and but her stage name she goes by. She, 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 I forget pronouncing it. Um, she, she not, uh, I think it's the way it's said. Uh, and um, and I always like to give credit where where credit is due, and also to highlight that, you know. Uh, the United States is not the only one that comes up with good Christian music. So. Uh, and so, please, um, be in prayer with me. You are here, moving in our midst. You are here, working in this place. You are here, touching every heart. You are here, healing every heart. You are here, here, turning lives around. You are here, mending every heart. Amen. And our first song is Because He Lives. And I believe, are we doing all of the verses? Okay. And we're doing all of the verses, so... If you'd like to stand, stand. If not, you can please be, you can stay seated. That's up to you. Whatever it is. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Whatever we have, we have.
Amen. And our silent prayer, you don't have to read with me unless you want to, uh, but uh, take a time to be in the, uh, in the presence of God, confess what we need to confess, and to be ready to gather the words of insurance that God has got laid out for you today. Lord, we come to worship you, to praise you, and to ask for forgiveness. How foolish we are to think that our worship is pure. Our praise is deep, and the forgiveness we seek will be remembered beyond this day. You know our every thought, the number of the hairs on our heads, and the days we have on this earth. Please forgive us for our shortcomings and help us to strive towards a more meaningful and sincere worship, a more heartfelt praise, and a more lasting forgiveness. We ask this in Jesus' name. And as people said, amen. Thank you. And our next song is How Great Thou Art.
Please be seated. And it is time for our tithes, offerings, and gifts. And uh, and here at uh, Trinity, we have two two collection plates. One is brass. One is is a woven basket. Uh, and the brass plate is for your uh, church support, and the the basket is for our um, community lunch program to help feed. Um, those in need. Uh, and so I ask you to be as generous for everyone else that is worshiping us from a distance. Uh, you can see on your screen, uh, hopefully, the um, uh, where you can send uh, your generous tithes, offerings, and gifts to either Trinity United Methodist Church or Faith Fellowship United Methodist Church. Um, and you can do that either by mail or by electronically online. And so... Um, I will ask our usher to come forward and you'd like to sing the doxology as a come forward. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to give back to you our tithes, offering gifts. We ask for your blessing this day. We ask for your blessings on these tithes, offering gifts for all that we kept and all that you give us. And Lord, as we move through our days, may all that we have and all that we are be shared with the world in the name of your son, Jesus. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Bob. Electronic um, magis magic of um, trying to get Chaplain Roseanne's uh, wonderful children's message to everybody at the same time. <laughs> Good, Good morning. morning. I'm, I'm Chaplain, Chaplain Roseanne, Roseanne, and I have, and I have a, story a story for us. For us. Let's, Let's go, go down, down and see Miss Nancy's, Nancy's classroom. classroom. Good morning, Good morning, class, class said, said Miss Nancy. Nancy. Today, Today we'll, we'll talk, talk about, about the things, things the disciples did when they, they no longer had Jesus with them. them. Mike, Mike and Mandy jumped, jumped up to ask a question. question. Excuse, Excuse us, Miss Nancy, Nancy, but, but could, could they, they do, do miracles, miracles the way Jesus, Jesus did, said Mike. What, what do you, you think, think, said Miss Nancy. Nancy. Did, did Jesus, Jesus do anything to them? to make, make them, them ready, ready to do miracles? Maybe, Maybe they, they could, could because, because Jesus taught them how, said Mandy. Miss Nancy, Nancy said, 
They could be because Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit on them and sent them to do good in the world the way God the Father sent Jesus. One day, Peter and John went to the temple at the afternoon prayer time. They saw a man there who was born with physical challenges and had never been able to walk. Every day, his friends would bring him to the temple gate so that he could beg for money from the people who were entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John coming in, he asked them for money. Peter and John began to look at him very carefully as if they were thinking or praying silently inside their heads. Well, with careful attention like that, the poor man must have thought Peter and John were going to give him a lot of money. But Peter said, I don't have any money to give you. I'm sure the poor man's heart must have sank in a very tiny moment of disappointment, but it didn't last long because... Right away, Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. Then Peter held his hand, and the man got up. His feet and his ankles suddenly became strong, and he could walk and jump. He even walked with Peter and John into the temple. Before, when he wasn't well, he couldn't even go into the temple. Now he walked in with Peter and John, and this was his first time, and it felt like God was telling him, My precious child, I meant for you to be here all along. Welcome home. People all around were looking at him. He looked different standing up and celebrating and walking and jumping and talking to Peter and John. People asked each other if this were the same man that used to be outside begging. And when they decided that it was really the same man, they were astonished. Everybody started to come towards John and Peter and the man to see what happened. Peter had to talk to them. He explained that he and John didn't do this miraculous thing on their own power. It was through faith in Jesus that this happened. He reminded the people that Jesus of Nazareth was the man that they persuaded Pilate to crucify when he would have let him go. The people asked Pilate to free a murderer named Bar Abbas instead. The people didn't know that this Jesus was the Messiah, the real one. They'd seen fake messiahs before, but Jesus was the real one, the Christ. Christ means the same thing as Messiah. Well, Peter told them that he knew they didn't understand what they had done. They didn't know the truth before. They didn't know that this Jesus was the real one. If they could have faith now and repent, it wasn't too late to be forgiven. It's never too late to have faith and repent. Imagine that. Jesus loves us so much that he would even forgive the people who asked Pilate to crucify him. All they have to do now is have faith in him and repent. And now it's time to pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for all of your love and thank you for teaching us that it's never too late to have faith and to repent. Amen.
And um, since Chaplain Roseanne used the scripture that and told the story of the scripture that I, we'd be reading today, um, we're going to just simply go what she said. <laughs> uh, you don't have to hear it twice. Uh, and so what what Chaplain Ro Roseanne said, she read from the, the, the gospel, uh, the book of Acts. Um, I'd be focusing a little bit on uh, Acts, um, I'm sorry, Acts 3, 12 through 19. Uh, she started from 3.1 through through 19, uh, but 3.1 three, three through um, three one through 11 is part of my message anyway. So our message title today is What I Have is a Name. Now, for, for, for some folks, you might remember a fellow by the name of Jim Croce died in 1973, and one of the last songs he recorded, actually it was the last song he recorded, and it debuted just a, a, a week or so before he passed in a, in a plane crash. Um, it was written by uh, Gilbert and um, Gimble and Fox, um, and it, it was a song titled, I Got a Name, and, and the, the first few lines are these. Like the pine trees lining the winding roads, I've got a name, I've got a name. Like the singing birds and the croaking toads, I've got a name, I've got a name. And and he was, the the song is about him, him understanding that he's got a name and who he is and his destiny and and where he has to go and following his dream and who he is and and we all got names. For a lot of us, you know, we're named for for maybe someone uh, in our families, uh, um, uh, an uncle or, or in, in some cases, if you're a junior or a third, you may be uh, named for your, your, your father. Um, uh, like me, uh, my, my middle name is, is Anthony, and, and I was named for my father's um, father. Uh, and uh, I was supposed to be named actually uh, Mark. Uh, my first name was supposed to be Mark, uh, and my mother changed it last minute, which was my mother's father's middle name. So I had my, would have had my grandfather's middle name and my grandfather's first name. Uh, and then she decided that uh, she didn't want me to go through life um, having to answer where Cleopatra was, so she changed it to David last minute because uh, she didn't want me to be go through life as Mark Anthony. Um, uh, so we all have names. And I, and I brought in this cross, and I hope everybody can see it okay on camera. Uh, this cross was made by a dear friend and member of Faith Fellowship, United Methodist Church in Massachusetts. Uh, his name was Mike Machete. He's, he's since passed. Um, and he was moved to take name tags and put name tags all over the cross. It goes all the way around. And it's how all of our names are on the cross of Jesus. And artistically, he, he, he took some, some very close details. Wherever Jesus bled, there is a red name, name tag uh, here on his side, at the ends for each of his hands, at the top for his head, at his feet, and at the very bottom of the cross, the last three names that are there are Mary, John, and Mary for being who was at the foot of the cross. So names are important. But Jesus had a special name, or we think he had a special name. Right? Well, Jesus wasn't the only Jesus in Israel. Jesus' name in Hebrew, also in, by the way, in Aramaic, it's almost the same. It would be Yushia. And that's, if we were to spell it in, in English, it would be Y-E-S-H-U-A, Yushia. Which, if we translate that, not through the Latin which we get Jesus, but through from Hebrew to English, it's Joshua. 
And that's important because what the name of Joshua is. Now, remember, Mary and Joseph didn't name Jesus because Joshua happened to be, you know, her, her uncle's name or her grandfather's name or, 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 or Joseph's grandfather's name. No, they were told by the angel that, you, you know, Mary was to have a son and, and you were to, to name him Jesus or, or Yushia. And Mary was told that you, you, you know, the, the Holy Spirit has favor in you. You will have a son and you will call him Yushia, Joshua. Now, does anybody know of any other Joshua in the Bible? Quickly. Okay, didn't mean to put anybody on the spot there. Joshua was Moses' second-hand man or right-hand man. Joshua was the one that led his, the people into the Holy Land because Moses didn't make it. And so Joshua was a common name in Israel because of its significance. There was a city just outside of Jerusalem, or not, not that far away from Jerusalem, that was called Joshua. And it was where when the uh, when, when the Israelites uh, were left their captivity from Babylon, it's where they all those captive people settled. And the word or the meaning of the word or the name Joshua means salvation, saved, has saved, peace. So when the angels told Mary and Joseph, you're going to name your son Jesus, it was a powerful name then because what it represented. It represented to those people the n simple name of meant salvation. And now Jesus gets his ministry going. He gets sent uh, to, to the gallows, and he dies and, and is raised. And then Peter and John come along, and they start, they come to this fella that had been on the steps, and if we, if we really look, you realize that if we go through the scripture, you realize that Jesus actually walked by this man. Because we can find in Scripture where Jesus is in the, that very particle going into the temple. It's recorded. And this man was brought there daily. He was carried daily. So Jesus actually walked by him a few times. Maybe gave him alms. We don't know. But it is the power that Peter and John use that is where I want to go. Because the guy was looking for a living. He was looking for some coins to be thrown into a, a can or a, or, or a basket. But what does Peter offer him? Peter offers him Silver and gold I don't have, but what I'm going to give you is all you need. And I'm going to do it, in the, uh, and I'm going to give you the name of Jesus. And get up and walk. And he pulls, he, he gives him his hand, and the, the man gets up and walks. Now, what does that mean to the man? First off, the man's life has totally changed. Because, see, for, for years, his whole, sole source of income was sitting there and getting alms. Guess what? He's walking. Now he has to work. His life has changed. The, everything that he had has been changed. Who he has been identified as has been changed. All because of one name. We say Jesus. His name was... or or it, his people would have called him Joshua. 
for Yeshua. And with that simple name, this man's life is totally changed. Everybody around him, his life is totally changed. It gathered a crowd. It got the disciples in trouble. Everything changed because of one name. And you know what? I said last week <coughs> that, you know, we all have the power in us that rolls the stone away from the grave. We talked about the very power that, that, that raised Jesus from the grave is the same power that we have. And here the disciples, Peter and John, prove it. All they do is speak the name of Jesus, and it happens. But how did they speak that name? Did they speak that name with, well, maybe if I say so, and, and if it doesn't make anybody upset, you know, he just got killed, and it caused a whole lot of trouble in town. And yeah. No, they just proclaimed it. We as Methodists say that th our in the uh, that we are to boldly boldly proclaim the name of Jesus, boldly proclaim the name of Jesus. And in most of the times when that's written out, it the bold is bolded. But do we live that way? Do we do we utilize the name that we ha have inherited to change the world? and to change the world around us, to change people's lives. Most of the times, we can say no. We're too worried about do we, do, do we upset someone or, or, well, they may not be Christian. Okay, that's fine. They may not be Christian. But it, that's like saying you're not going to give them your name because your name might upset them. Think about it. Have you have you ever thought about walking up to somebody and go, "Hi, my name." I, well, you know, I, I don't know about your life, so I don't want to know. I I, I don't want to say my name just because maybe someone that that you you know with the same name that I have might have hurt you, and I don't want I don't want you to be to to remember it and 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 feel bad about it. So I'm not going to tell you my name. We wouldn't do that, would we? But yet, when we talk when we're talking about Jesus into the community, that's exactly what we do. I'm here solely, solely because Jesus died for me. I come, I'm come. i here in Vermont worshiping with you folks, worshiping with people all over the place to, oh, oh, I didn't see my thing, to the other side of the world today solely because Jesus is in my life. Solely because he died for me on the cross. No other reason. Because if I was to map out my life, I shouldn't be standing here. When I was younger, I lived a life that if my plan was I would not get past 35. That was the life I lived. If I got to 36, I was doing good. Well, obviously, by the amount of gray hair I have, I have made it well beyond that. Why? Because God wasn't done with me yet, and the name of Jesus needed to be projected from me because that's God's plan for not only me, for everybody else. And how do we do that? Well, again, it's simple. You can shout from the mountaintop. And some will hear you. You can stand on the street corner and yell it out, and some will hear you. And you can, <coughs> and you can whisper it in the middle of the crowd and have everyone. 
That's the power of Jesus' name. That in the middle of the crowd, that you're doing the right thing. You're, you're smiling. You're making an impact into other people's life because Jesus' name is in you. Then everyone is seeing it. Nobody's shutting it off. If I come up to Deb here, right? It's Deb, right? If I come up, look, I come up to Deb. I just said Deb, right? And she started smiling. I just spoke Jesus' name and never said it. And it made a difference to her for that very moment. Hopefully it makes her a difference for, for the day. Hey, I remembered her name. That's a plus. Because I forget names. So, are we boldly speaking Jesus? Are we sharing Jesus' name? Are we living out what we are called to do? When we walk by the lame, the hungry, the hurt, are we looking at them? Are, we, are, are our eyes meeting? Maybe we can't, we're at the moment, you know, we're not able to, to take care of them. But are we looking at them as them as being human beings? Or are we crossing the street so we don't have to worry about them asking us for change? That's spreading the good news, but that's also proclaiming the name of Jesus because you are not going to change their lives. You are not going to give them a meal. You're not going to put clothes on their back or a roof on their head. Because it may be beyond our physical means, but it isn't beyond the name of Jesus. I can tell you stories of lives being changed because someone decided to show a little of Jesus to the world. I think we have some folks here that have, have traveled overseas um, in, in not travel overseas in vacation and going to those little nice isolated places but I mean, in, into where the locals are living. And, and it is amazing to see sometimes how there's nothing around you, um, and you pull out a candy bar from your backpack, and next thing you know, you have, you have 30 kids looking for a piece of that candy bar. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to experience. And so you share the candy bar and gum or whatever else you happen to have. And all of a sudden, somebody asks you why you're doing it. Why'd you do that? Why'd you pay attention to those people? And your answer is only, well, because that's what I'm supposed to do. Because that's done in the name of Jesus. And it changes the world, and it changes you forever. So I challenge you to be boldly proclaiming Jesus. The only thing you need is his name. The only thing you need is in the faith that we know what Jesus can do and what he has done and what he will do. The name of Jesus, all you have is a name. You've got a name that will last a lifetime. You've got a name that will last eternity. And you've got a way to share that name and to change everybody's life with that name. Again, I, I am humbly blessed that you allow me to share these words and thoughts with you, uh, and, and thank you.
and then we will go to God moments. And and I thought we were going to go to God moments. Um, okay, good. And we'll go to God moments. And so, do we? Yeah, we have the microphone. Uh, so, do we have folks that are? Um, Excuse me. Um, do, do we have any God moments here at Montpelier? And what we'll do is we will hear from our, our folks here at Montpelier. We'll look uh, to see for our people worshiping from a distance. And um, uh, we, will, um, we will then share a list from, um, from Faith Fellowship and Corliss that gathers it from all over the place. So some of the some of the folks that are worshiping from us from a distance will actually be there from the probably from last week that are added on to to this week. So um, does anybody? And what's your daughter's name? Sue Ellen. I'm going to be praying for Sue Ellen. Eyesight and recovery. Anyone else? Okay, all you people. I Go ahead, I Vicky. Do. Um, I do. Um, I follow a few different churches on Facebook. And um, it's been a tough week for me, although I do think one of the God moments we experienced was the eclipse. Um, that clearly was. But um, one of the churches that I follow on Facebook posted up a whole bunch of pictures of their Easter celebration. And there were lots of people there, and they were having meals together, and kids and there were young adults and there were teenagers and there were older people like me um, and they were all having a good time and I looked at those pictures and my depression deepened greatly because I don't know that we'll ever have that here again so I would like there's a lot of us I think that few of us that are really having a hard time with the fact that we are not in the sanctuary and that people have stopped coming. So for all of us, we could use a prayer. Okay. I, 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 are we saying that God hasn't showed up in anybody's life this year? All right. Are you grateful that you're here? That's a God moment. And you know God's not done with you yet, right? There's a test. I can give you a test if you want very quickly to prove that God is not done with you. Uh, you want to take the test? All right, let's get ready. All right, first, first I want you to take a deep breath in and hold it and let it out. Okay, God's not done with you yet. So there we have things to be grateful for. Um, I, I'm going to share some great things that I'm grateful for uh, that I've blessed today. I was um, I, I was doing a service at, at Grace uh, United Methodist Church in Plainfield uh, this morning, and uh, John uh, and his granddaughter um, Aurora uh, was took up the offering, and and uh, so. They came forward and they were usually they use a plate like we do here and and but today they had a basket, uh, and and it just seeing the little girl, um, she's about yay tall, uh, and and the basket just just brought me back to some very powerful moments that I had had witnessed uh, in in other places, uh, and and it it fired up a spirit in me of of hope um, that, you know, here, here we are um, at, the, at the offering 
And what's being offered is this young life and, and the future. And so it was, to me, it was a great God moment, and I, I promised I would share it, and I did. Um, I, I also want to, to share that um, uh, I don't use names uh, often, and, and uh, for those of us at Faith Fellowship, we, we know this lady simply as Auntie because uh, uh, she's an aunt of, of one of uh, the church members, and she's coming to us today. Uh, she's worshiping with us today uh, from India. So she lives in India and travels here to spend time with family, and she's with us today from India. So that's that's always a, a, a blessing and, and something to be grateful for. Um, and um, uh, David is asking... Um, Travel prayers for his uh, son and daughter-in-law uh, as they are going to Italy for a couple of weeks, and they're and and they're newlyweds. They just got married this um, this year. So um, keep them in your your prayers um, as well. Uh, and I am I am blessed by all of the folks that worship with us from many different places. Uh, we have people from different places in Massachusetts, Maine, um, and so um, India, uh, the middle part of the country, uh, and so we are uh, we are blessed uh, by that. Uh, and um, you know, after all of the rain that Vermont got, I expected someone this morning to say, "Oh." Man, we're blessed with all of the sunshine because it sure is good out there. I'll tell you that much. Uh, and so uh, with that, um, we will turn, if no one else has anything, um, <coughs> I will turn to the uh, list that Paulus uh, puts together, and we, we thank her. So... Um, And another blessing, Sweden just joined us. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so Corliss uh, always raises the, the things uh, that we should be praying for, the unrest in the world, the Ukraine, the Gaza, the Yemen, the Iran, uh, all of the global unrest. Um, uh, the continued violence throughout the country and the world, you know, um, and uh, the um, so we want to bring that in um, the the renewed uh, the renewed uh, hate uh, that has has raised this ugly head. You know, we, you know, I was raised at the time of of um, of racial equality and and making strides forward and, and it seems we we are going backwards and 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 not only for for people of color but also for people of different faiths and and so we need to keep that in prayer um, the um, the floodings um, in in Russia I don't know if anybody's keeping up with that but there's been two bursts of dams in Russia and that has cost a number of lives uh, so we want to keep that in prayer uh, she asked for prayers. Uh, Faith Fellowship is is facing some 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 steps into the future, uh, and and we're and they're these folks are seeing through the power of Jesus' name um, things coming coming to um, to realization. I mean, they're a church that reaches you know uh, almost a thousand people in many different places throughout the world each week. Um, and they don't have a building. They don't have a sanctuary to get into. They do, uh, and, and they continue to do great ministry um, that works with um, migrants um, and teaching English and hospice care uh, and uh, house churches um, and community involvement uh, throughout the country. Uh, so... Uh, they're asking for prayer. Um, 
those um, hospitalized. Um, I want to pray for for Jay, um, uh, a, a friend of mine, uh, and a, a, f um, a colleague, uh, Reverend uh, Neil Sweet, um, better known as Sandy. Uh, folks that are having surgery: Cheryl R., John W., Karen C., Candice. Uh, Diane um, and Keeling, Audrey, Laura, uh, uh, Deb J, Kara, Collis, Jean, Alicia. Um, still praying for the for the kittens or for the cats. Ben of Ben, Blossom and Nan, um, and uh, the dog King, uh, and um, Amy B. And then we talked about, you know, travel mercies for everyone as we are all traveling. And, and I, I always ask for, and, and I'm always grateful for the prayers that I get from my, from my short commute each week. Uh, and um, also want to pray uh, general conferences coming up for the United Methodist Church and also our annual conference that is coming up. So if you can keep that in prayer as the, the business of the church unfolds. Um, and... Um, and I also want to raise up all of the folks that have had uh, losses uh, as well as the opportunity that we enjoy when we get to work in the gardens, catch up with friends, um, and just uh, enjoy uh, eating our lunch outside where it's, where it's nice and, and can do it with loved ones. And so those are some of the things that were raised up from Faith Fellowship and from people that worship with us from a distance. And so usually I would ask you to, uh, uh, to to take a moment of silence, and then I would lead you in prayer. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, we are going to hear um, from Stephen McWitter, um, and uh, we're going to let him pray for us in song. And so listen to the words, listen to the music. Uh, and uh, so we'll be playing a YouTube uh, video that will be our prayer, and then I will lead you into the Lord's Prayer. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over
without Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the dark and soul of every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the word. Just wanna speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. can say amen. And so as you remember the Lord's Prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so as we get ready to leave here today, let us remember these words. Uh, speak Jesus wherever you go. And let's do it by remembering that we are the only Bible someone will see. We're the only word of God that someone will hear. And we are the only light of Jesus that can right in someone's dark world. So let's burn through the shadows. Let's take the lyrics of that song and let's put it over our entire lives and our families and our communities and our churches and our neighborhoods and let's just speak Jesus to the world. It's easy to do. Let's do it in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, standing on the everlasting rock of that name, Jesus Christ. So rock on. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for worshiping with us, and thank you for all of you that have worshiped and gathered with us from all over the place today. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye.